Hello and welcome to this example in which we will use static equilibrium to determine the force necessary to raise this barrel up over the step that you see. So in other words, we're going to discover how hard these two guys have to pull in order to get the barrel up this step. Um, one assumption that we will make is that the barrel does not slip on the step. In other words, um, this contact down here has enough friction to keep the barrel from sliding because if it starts to slide then it becomes much more difficult. Okay, so obviously the first thing we want to do in this case is draw a free body diagram. But actually before we get to the free body diagram per se, we need to do a little bit of geometry because we will need to know um, things about uh, the distance between this point where the step and the barrel contact and other points in the barrel. So the first thing let's do is just go to a picture of a barrel. Its center is about here and the step would be something like this so that um, the diameter of the barrel is two meters which means that the radius of the barrel is one meter and this step has a height of 0.5 meters which means that if I draw a radius here this is also 0.5 meters and the thing that I'm going to need to know for my analysis is how long this distance is okay and so we can do this actually fairly easily with trigonometry. Turns out trigonometry uh, gives us all sorts of useful things. Uh, if we draw then a right triangle, which goes from the center of the barrel down 0.5 meters over to this point and back up. Okay we know that the hypotenuse of this triangle is one meter because that's the radius of the barrel and we know that uh, this distance here is 0.5 meters so that allows us to find this angle here and once we find this angle uh, we since we know the hypotenuse we can compute uh, the distance that we're interested in so um, if we look at the definition here, uh, the cosine, uh, or let's see, um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we know that the cosine of theta, let's call that angle that we're interested in theta, is 0.5 meters over 1 meter, which is um, 1 half. And so then we can compute the inverse cosine of theta and or we can just remember that the cosine of 60 degrees is one half. It turns out that this theta is 60 degrees. Okay, and then that means that the length of this line segment that we're interested in from the edge of the barrel to this point here is given by one meter times the sine of theta which uh, tells us then that the length is 8.66 meters so this is or I'm sorry 0.866 meters this is 0.866 and this is 0.5 and this is going to turn out to be useful uh, when we start doing computations because we need to know the uh, coordinates, if you will, of this point where the barrel's contacting the step. So now we have that. So now let's go to the free body diagram. Okay, if you remember to do a free body diagram, we cut the, the um, system that we're interested in loose from everything that it's in contact with. So we'll cut it here at this rope we'll cut it here at this corner and we'll cut it here at the bottom but I'm going to make an assumption that makes that unnecessary and then we also need to take into account the weight um, the force due to gravity so 
With this in mind, we go to our barrel and draw our free body diagram. We will have a tension force going in this direction due to the rope. And so I'll, I know the direction because I know which direction the rope is. I don't know the magnitude, so I'll call that T. We will also have at this point of contact where the barrel meets the curb, we will have a force. Uh, this is the reaction force of the curb on the barrel. And we don't know what this is. We don't know its magnitude or its direction. Uh, we know that there's no torque here because there's no way that the curb uh, in contact with the barrel at a single point can supply a torque. So we'll call this FA and I'll put a vector here to indicate that we know neither the magnitude nor the direction. Another way of thinking about it is we don't know the X component, we don't know the Y component. We also then have the weight of the barrel which goes from its center downward. Uh, let's see, we'll have the weight be about this long. And this weight, um, we know its direction, we don't know its magnitude. So the weight is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared times 250 kilograms, which will be equal to um, well, let's actually compute it and see what we get. So we have 9.8 times 250. So we get 2,450 newtons. This is 2,450 newtons. Okay, now some of you are probably looking at this and saying, wait, you're missing a force. Why don't you have, and I'll draw this in a different color so I can cross it out, why don't we have a reaction force from the ground pushing up against our barrel? Well, in general we would. However, for this problem we want to know the tension and the rope that's necessary to lift the barrel over the curb. So right before the barrel starts to move, the instant before it begins to move up over the curb, we that, that's the instant we're looking at. And at that instant, right before it starts to move up over the curve, we have enough tension in the rope that exactly balances out the weight of the barrel so that there is no reaction force here pushing up on the barrel. Okay, so again, in general, there would be a reaction force uh, if the barrel is just you know, sitting on the ground. But because we're looking at the tension that's necessary to start the barrel moving, we will um, consider the, the case where this reaction force is not acting on the barrel. We're actually just interested in the tension. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so um, let me also draw in the geometry that we've uh, found out. We have that this distance is 0.866 meters and this distance is 0.5 meters. Okay, so with this we can now apply the equations that we have uh, for static equilibrium. We can say that the summation of the moments about the origin are equal to zero. Okay, and actually since we're doing two dimensions we don't really need to worry about this being a vector, so the summation of the magnitude of the moments about the origin is equal to zero. Then we'll do the summation of forces in the y direction is zero, and the summation of forces in the x direction is zero. Okay, let's find the moments about the origin. And we'll define the origin to be right here because it makes our life easier. Okay, so we have the force T acting with a moment arm of one meter. That's the distance 
from the edge of the barrel to the center. So we can say then that we have, um, and that's going counterclockwise, so that's going to be positive. So we have one meter times T. Then uh, the weight is going through the origin, so it is not going to give us any torque. Um, we have the way we've drawn it, a vector. If we break FA into its components, we have FAY and FAX. Okay, so FAX is pushing this direction with a moment arm of 0.5 meters. So this is going to be plus 0.5 meters times FAX. And we have FAY pushing up with a moment arm of 0.866 meters. So this will be minus FAY times 0.866 meters. And that's equal to zero. Okay. The summation of forces in the y direction. In the y direction, we have W going down and FAY, the y component of FA, going up. So we have FAY minus W is equal to zero. Okay. And finally, in the x direction, we have FAX going to the right and T going to the left. So we have FAX minus T is equal to zero. Okay, we know what W is. This guy here we computed as being this. So we have three equations in three unknowns. Again, our unknowns are T, FAY, and FAX. And so if we solve those equations in our unknowns, uh, I'm not going to actually show you how we would solve them. You just plug them into, into Wolfram Alpha or use your favorite approach to solving uh, equations. In fact, actually, this one's not going to be that hard. Uh, we can see from this equation that FAY is equal to um, 2,450 newtons. Okay, so we need to have the y component here push up with the same amount as the weight is pushing down. So um, solving the other two equations for the things we don't know, we get FAX is 1,414 newtons and T, the tension in our rope, is 1,414 newtons as well because uh, this equation down here would tell us that T is equal to FAX. So there you have it. We've uh, found the tension that we need to pull the barrel so that it just barely begins to leave the ground rolling up over the corner. So this pretty much concludes this example, except for one thing. Uh, you'll notice that this is a three-force body. There's T, which is a force, W, which is a force, and FA, which is a force. And because it's a three-force body, there's actually some interesting uh, symmetry issues associated with the forces. There are certain things that have to be true about the forces. And so in part two, we'll go over this and show that if you recognize that this is a three-force body, you can somewhat simplify the analysis of the forces on it. So see you in part two.